This episode of Hops and Gnarly Brewing is sponsored by Yakima Valley Hops. Hazy IPAs, I mean, what can I say? This style is so mainstream that at this point, just about every macro producer in the world has a Hazy IPA in their lineup. Think Terrapin High and Hazy by Molson Coors, Elysian Contact High by Anheuser-Busch, Ballast Point Passing Haze by Constellation Brands, and Lagunitas Hazy Wonder by Heineken. Luckily, while the big boys catch up, smaller producers are experimenting with new hop products to bring us beers like this one, Incognito Mode from Anchorage Brewing. Today, I'm testing a new hop product called Incognito, and we're making a Hazy IPA. Now, let's make some beer. For this beer, I'm starting with some reverse osmosis water and I'm building the water profile to match the hoppy New England IPA water profile in Brewfather. Skipping this step would be no bueno, so make sure you slow it down and be intentional with your water choice here. For the grain bill, I'm going with 72% proximity base malt, which is essentially a super pale two row. 11% malted oats, 11% flaked oats, and a little bit of dextrin malt for a total of 18 pounds of grain and a target original gravity of 1074. It's gonna be a tight squeeze in the B40. Let's get it going. I'm mashing this in at 104 Fahrenheit or 40 Celsius and I'll keep stirring until everything is nice and saturated. Then we'll hang out here for a minute before ramping up to our final mash temperature of 152 where I'll recirculate the wort for 45 minutes. While the mash finishes up, let's talk about Yakima Valley hops. Yakima Valley hops started in a garage in 2012 and has since grown into a team of 25 people working to bring the best hops to brewers of every size. And that last part is key. The new hop product I'm testing today is called Incognito and until recently the smallest amount you could buy was 2 kilograms or about 4.4 pounds. Lucky for us homebrewers, Yakima Valley Hops was willing to repackage Incognito into 20 milliliter containers. And that's just Incognito. They've been making great hops accessible since their start in 2012 and were my go-to hop supplier long before Hops and Gnarly. Check out the link in the description to learn more. All right, we've been mashing for over an hour now. Time to yank these grains with a little help from Meg. Cool. The next step is called the Vorloff, and the goal is to clarify the wort and maximize the sugar extraction by recirculating the wort through the grain bed. You can do this with a pump like I am here, or you can manually pull wort from the kettle with a pitcher or something like that and dump it back over the grain bed. After about 10 minutes, I'm switching to a sparge manifold and rinsing the grains with a little over a gallon of water. Now, let's heat it up to a boil. Thank you. 
For this recipe, I've shortened the typical 60 minute boil to just 20 minutes and I won't be adding any hops during this step. As soon as those 20 minutes are up, I'm dropping the temperature down to 170 Fahrenheit or about 77 Celsius for a step called the Whirlpool. Now that we're down to temp, it's time for some hops. I've got 30 grams of Lupomax Citra and 30 grams of Enigma, but that's just the beginning. I'm also adding 15 grams each of Citra Incognito and Mosaic Incognito, which is the equivalent of about six ounces of hops. If you add it all up, that's about eight ounces of hops in the Whirlpool for this six gallon batch of beer. I just hope that isn't too much hops. After a 20 minute spin, I'll cool the beer down and pitch the yeast. Don't forget to close your valves, folks. To complement the massive amount of hops, I'm going with Cosmic Punch from Omega Yeast. They took a British ale yeast and literally edited the genes to unleash tropical fruit aromas in your beer, and I can't wait to see what it does to this one. At High Krausen, I dry hopped with 90 grams each of Enigma and Lupo Max Citra. Now, let's see how it turned out. To recap, this beer started with some reverse osmosis water that I crafted to have a high chloride to sulfate ratio. To that, I added a bunch of super pale two row, some oats, and some dextrin malt. Then, after a quick 20 minute boil, I added an extreme amount of incognito, some lupomax citra, and some super fresh enigma. And if that wasn't enough, I went with a crisper edited yeast, dry hopped with even more hops, and I carved it up nice and slow until I poured this. It's a golden yellow color with a beautiful white head and the aroma is exploding from the glass with notes of citrus and pine. This is a flavor I think we all know and love, but taken as far as possible. There's so much citrus in there, it's almost butting up against pine. It's great. And I'll proudly share this with friends. But looking back on this brew day, two big things stand out to me. First, this is a sketchy amount of grain for this system. I had to really baby the mash and I still undershot my target original gravity. Next time I brew something like this, I either need to scale it down or add some kind of malt overflow pipe to my mash basket. Second, take a look inside this kettle as I transferred to the fermenter. See all that oil on top of the surface? That's incognito, and there's no way it all made it to the fermenter. Obviously, neither did those hops, but it makes me wonder if I wasted some of the potential. I guess I'll just have to make another batch. More to come. My name's Dan. This is Hops and Gnarly. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.